ways of visiting a city. Some avid travellers seek adventure or an enriching experience. And others don't feel like being tourists at all. So simply and less pretentiously just set off. We hear complimentary words, inquisitive, sensitive and culture. Or perhaps slowness when we're prisoners of the rapid pace of life. They're terms that are all associated with travellers. We often think of a traveller as being solitary, or at most, a couple, and at a stretch, to be scouting around with friends or the family. The tourist, on the other hand, is generally controlled by a fast rhythm and the chaos of a group. Their roles, however, don't seem so rigid anymore. And as our cultural curiosity increases, Together with our interest for the slow life philosophy and well-being, we are all brought closer together. In any case, Orvieto is never short of beauty, mystery and emotions to be enjoyed and remembered by both travellers and tourists. Orvieto, the headquarters of the international association Chita Slow, has its own relaxed rhythm of life. The clue is slowness. And to get into its true spirit, we must approach it without haste. Approaching the steep hilltop town, for example, we see the heart of the city crowns the ancient mass of Tufa Rock. The heart meaning the centre, but also its shape on the map. The shape of a heart with its towers, its walls and its curved lines is drawn. If we aren't in a hurry, the best way to be overwhelmed is to not take the motorway, but to come along the hairpin bends of the cassia, through the vineyards and olive groves, and the soft, rolling hills upon which the rock lies, offering a breathtaking landscape from a distance. The nude, warm Tufa rock, with the Duomo, the clock tower, St John's convent, the ridge of the ancient walls, and the church of San Giovinale on the steepest point of the rock. And once in the city, without hurrying, not only can we soak up the splendour of the main sights during our stay, but we also have the rare gift of a calm and fulfilling visit. A journey that can be transformed into a way of life. A magnificent cathedral, a palimpsest for three centuries, that through the laced stone on the façade tells the stories of the Old and New Testament and the wonderful traces of art and history the eras have left us. From the chapel of Luca Signorelli to the modern doors by Emilio Greco, as we're going to discover at the Opera del Duomo Museum, along with many hidden but no less remarkable treasures. For example, the Madonna enthroned at the Papal Palaces, an Admiral Polyptic by Simone Martini. And in the church of Sant'Agostino, the striking group of sculptures, The Annunciation by Francesco Mocchi. Sublime among the other great statues of the Mannerist period that until 1800 decorated the inside of the Duomo. If, after visiting the archaeological museums and the Palazzo Faina, we linger a little, taking in the atmosphere of Piazza del Duomo, and maybe, if the opportunity arises, to taste a sandwich made of local delicacies, or a superb traditional ice cream, and to hear the great automaton clock chime from Maurizio's tower, you'll certainly begin to enjoy the city. Not just the immediate visual pleasure, the sounds, tastes and smells, but it will begin to touch the inner soul. It's there, available and ready to be revealed in each interested and careful traveller. The ancient roads of Orvieto are easy to reach, Go along Via del Duomo, over the crossroads at the clock tower, where you'll find yourself moving on to the centre stage of the town. One of the most evocative panoramas of the city and valley. Squares representing the religious and civic powers, from Cathedral Square to the Piazza del Popolo, the People's Square, where the city dwellers' market is held. Colourful and filled with a sense of fresh produce from the surrounding countryside and the powerful 1300s palace, which used to house the captain of the people, towering over the Piazza del Popolo. Today, it contains a modern conference center. 
The ancient Decomanus runs along Corso Cavour, and to the northeast of the town, at the top end of Piazza Cain, lie the remains of the Etruscan temple of Belvedere. The impressive rocca or fortress of Albanos, and the fascinating St. Patrick's Well. On the western side of the town, Piazza della Repubblica, perhaps the ancient forum, the centre of business and town life, with the church of Sant'Andrea, the town hall, and the Palazzo Ottaviani, today a bank, the Casa di Risparmio di Ovieto. Travellers will be rewarded most of all by their detours, allowing them the pleasure of discovering unexpected details and a slow pace. Many features will be discovered knowingly, and others by chance. Artisan boutiques that know how to continue the ancient crafts in a personal and modern way. Ceramics, terracotta, leather, wood, gold, the patient work of the typical Orvietano lace. A rare tradition of fine quality, passed down from generation to generation. Wine shops, tasting corners, bakeries, coffee, chocolate boutiques, gastronomic delicacies, inviting you to savour the finest mouth-watering flavours. And modest, refined houses, bustling with life and charm. Gardens and flower, water and vegetables. Elegant palaces with courtyards that are not forbidden. Cloisters and wells, gables and inscriptions, cornices and rustication, two and three light windows, Spires and lunettes everywhere are highlighting the subdued triumph of the tufa and stone from building to building, door to door, window to window. And overbearing and precious churches along the medieval lanes and small piazzas. From the ancient San Giovinale to the magnificent interior of San Lorenzo di Arari. From the unusual Baroque church of the Gesù to the austere and imposing San Domenico with a bombastic monument to Cardinal de Bray, sculpted by Arnolfo di Cambio. From the refined, pure white entrance to the Sant'Agostino complex, now a museum, to the silence of the ex-convent of San Giovanni, the Umbrian regional wine Enoteca, and the Palazzo del Gusto. Because it's right here where we find the magical formula of the art, culture and well-being of the city of Orvieto regenerating ancient places with satisfying current and modern pleasures. And if, in the end, the tourist traveller would really like to make the most of Orvieto, we shouldn't miss out on experiencing the town in its silence. But also when it's most animated, with numerous festivals throughout the year, the magnificent Feast of Corpus Domini, a solemn religious procession and the traditional corteo in full pageantry in the historical centre the theatre season at the Manchinelli Theatre, and the many musical events building up towards the end of the year, specialising in enogastronomy, and of course the best international jazz at Umbria Jazz Winter. <laughs>